In this video, I'll take you through my trading 212 portfolio as it stands at the end of November 2023. As shown in my Invest Engine update, it has been a much better month for the stock market than it was in October. My portfolio of UK stocks has particularly benefited from the latest inflation data, which showed CPI rose by 4.6% in the 12 months to October, down from 6.7% in the 12 months to September. However, we will have to wait and see if this optimism is warranted, as core CPI still remains high at 5.7% in the 12 months to October. And Andrew Bailey, the Governor of the Bank of England, has noted that we should not anticipate an interest rate cut anytime soon. Although some of the FTSE 100 companies in my portfolio make a lot of their profits overseas, and therefore less reliant on UK economic performance, the financial sector stocks in my portfolio are certainly very responsive to UK economic data. And before I dive into the update and reveal my new holdings, I'll quickly go over the purpose of my individual stock portfolio. I believe most investors should have the bulk of their investments in mutual funds or ETFs, and I certainly do this myself, with the bulk of my investments over on Invest Engine in ETFs. Be sure to check out my Invest Engine portfolio update if you've not already. And if you want to track how my portfolios have done month to month, I do have a portfolio updates playlist, so you can quickly see all my updates in one place. So far, I've chosen to invest mostly in well-established dividend-paying companies, as they tend to be less volatile than other stocks, and it's a nice psychological boost to have dividend payments coming in. And although I have of course paid attention to financial metrics and try to ensure I do not overpay for a stock, I have not strictly looked at stocks through a factor investing lens. It makes little sense for me to be so influenced by factors when picking ETFs, but then not giving them much thought at all when picking individual stocks. Therefore, from now on, alongside other things, I'll be considering and showing how new stocks I add to the portfolio rank on quality, value, and momentum. To do this, I'll use the website Stockopedia, which gives every stock a regularly updated score for quality, value, and momentum, alongside an overall stock rank that equally weights all three. Stockopedia's 10 years of stock rank data it's clear that stocks scoring highly on factor criteria have a much better chance of beating the market, with the reverse being true for those not satisfying any factor criteria. In addition to these ranks, Stockopedia brings together all the latest information and data you could possibly need to analyse a stock on a neatly presented stock report. Their service is certainly going to not only make my own personal research into stocks much easier, but also improve the quality of information I can show and share in my videos. For this reason, and given the strong conviction in factor investing that I share with the Stockopedia team, I found it hard to say no to a partnership. If you're going to play the risky game of picking stocks, you want to give yourself the best possible chance of picking winners, and I believe Stockopedia's tools, used right, can help you do that. As a viewer of my channel, if you sign up via the link in the description, you'll not only get a 14 day free trial, but also 25% off your first subscription and a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not happy with the service. I'd only ever promote a platform that I believe offers a great service and great value, and given the free trial and money back guarantee, in this case, you really can't go wrong by giving Stockopedia a try. And before we get going, as always, please keep in mind, these videos are not financial advice or a recommendation to invest in any of the featured stocks. I'm simply sharing my own journey for entertainment purposes. When investing, your capital is at risk, Investments can fall as well as rise, and you may get back less than what you put in. So, starting off with the overall performance chart, you can see that my unrealised return is now in the positive at plus £178.46, or plus 3.18%, which is a big change from the minus £115.67 it was in the last update. And if I'd made this update a few days earlier, my unrealised return would be even higher. But overall the portfolio is clearly looking much healthier now and it's nice to see. At the end of the video I'll go into detail about my contributions this month and my actual return from my Trading212 portfolio. As you'll know I'm not a fan of this homepage figure that Trading212 shows as it does not include realised gains or losses and dividends received nor does it take into account costs such as stamp duty. Please keep in mind when watching other YouTubers that this homepage figure does not represent someone's lifetime returns and can easily be manipulated by selling all your positions with big losses. Moving on to the holdings breakdown, my first holding is GSK, the second largest British pharmaceutical company by market capitalisation. There's no major news regarding GSK this month. As mentioned previously, the gamble with this stock is the Zantac litigation in the US. A defeat in the courts for GSK could send the share price tumbling. That being said, in the long term, GSK's balance sheet is healthy enough to handle some fines, 
Although, of course, this is not a question of their survival, but a question of returns, and some big bills from the courts certainly will not help the share price. City analysts are anticipating that GSK will settle all cases against it for around $5 billion in the first quarter of 2024. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Looking at the performance over the past month, GSK is down by 3.61%, so clearly not a very good month for this stock. And switching to the year-to-date chart, we can see that the boost of the share price in October seems to have come to an end, and now the share price is down again to the levels it started the year at. I have rounded my position up to 52 whole shares with a very small addition of 0.2 shares, and my average purchase price now stands at 1,361.4 pence, which with the current price of 1,401 pence, gives me an unrealized return of plus £19.78 or 2.79%. GSK is a quarterly dividend payer with a yield of 3.92% and a payout ratio of 38.45%. I've received £7.02 in dividends so far and the next quarterly dividend went ex-dividend on the 16th of November and the payment date will be the 11th of January 2024. The dividend amount has been declared at 14p per share and I can expect a payment of £7.28. My next holding is Legal & General, the financial services and asset management company. Legal & General's asset management division has been hit heavily by the increase in interest rates in the past year, so the inflation data that came out this month was good news for Elgen, as it signals that although it may not be soon, interest rates have a greater chance of coming down within the next year or so and the share price has responded accordingly. It is up by 9.09%, so a big recovery for the LGEN share price, and it shows how sensitive stocks like this are to economic data releases. However, on the year-to-date chart, we can see that Legal in general still is down by 9.34% overall this year, and that is unsurprising given that we still have a long way to go before interest rates come down again. I've bought an extra 27.7 shares since last month, which gives me a nice round number of 500 shares owned, and an average purchase price of 224.7 pence. The current price is 228.5 pence, giving me an unrealized return of £15.77 or 1.4%. The main reason people invest in legal in general though, myself included, is the dividend. It pays out twice a year with an interim and final payment, and the dividend yield is currently 8.72% and a payout ratio of 59.84%. I've only received £26.31 in dividends so far, but the final dividend will go ex-dividend on the 25th of April 2024 and pay out on the 3rd of June 2024. The dividend amount has not been announced yet, but based on the board's comments, I can expect a payment of 14.63 pence per share, totaling £73.15. So it really is one of those shares that you're just hoping for the share price to remain stable, as the dividend alone will give you a great return. Before going on to the next holding, if you're enjoying the update so far, please do leave a like. It really helps the channel and it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Next up, I have NatWest Group with the ticker NWG on the London Stock Exchange. NatWest had a big dip last month due to their latest earnings showing a reduction in their net interest margin. And of course, all the news surrounding the Farage debanking saga did not help matters either. That being said, NatWest has somewhat recovered this month and I do seem to have been correct that the market overreacted initially. We can see that over the past month, the NatWest share price is up by 16.19%, so I would have to say that if anyone did buy during the dip last month, you got yourself a bit of a bargain. There is still a little way to go before I'll be back to breaking even though, as I'll show shortly. The other news surrounding NatWest is that the UK government has once again indicated that they may be offloading their stake in the company soon. I know this can be a worrying sign for some, as a flood of shares onto the market will send the share price tumbling. Although in theory this should be temporary, as it does not impact the fundamentals of the business. Anyway, it's definitely something to keep in mind. Looking at my position, I now have 330 shares owned, with an average purchase price of 229.9 pence. And with the current price of 206.4 pence, I have an unrealized loss of £75.59 or 9.96%. NatWest pays out a dividend in two payments, an interim and final payment, and the current yield is a whopping 7.63%, with a payout ratio of 31.83%. I've received £11.59 in dividend since I've held it so far, and the next dividend will be the final payment going ex-dividend on the 14th of March 2024, and the payment date will be the 30th of April 2024. Up next in the portfolio is Rio Tinto, the largest mining company in the FTSE 100. There's been no major news impacting Rio Tinto this month, 
but the share price has continued to go up further since last month, with the one month chart showing a 3.07% increase. Rio Tinto still does remain down on the year to date chart though, so an investor's personal return will vary depending on when they bought. I've purchased an additional 1.8 shares since last month, meaning I now have 22 shares owned. My average purchase price is 4,925.4 pence, and the current price is 5,400 pence, giving me a great unrealized return of plus £104.78, or 9.67%. It pays out dividends with an interim and final payment. The current yield is 5.95%, and it has a pretty high payout ratio of 92.58%. I've received £20.47 in dividends so far, and the next dividend payment will be the final payment going ex-dividend on the 7th of March 2024, with the payment date being on the 18th of April 2024. The next holding is different from the rest in that it is an investment trust, Scottish Mortgage with the ticker SMT. Scottish Mortgage aims to invest in high growth potential companies they believe will prove pivotal in the future. This sort of strategy comes with high volatility and they will of course pick a lot of losers as well as winners. I did buy into this investment trust when it was very much unloved, and I do believe that in the long run, my entry price will prove to be a good one. The latest US inflation data has helped drive strong performance in the holdings of SMT, as growth stocks always respond well to lower inflation and the possibility of lower interest rates on the horizon. In the past month, we can see that SMT is up by 11.77%, so clearly a strong reaction to the economic data, and looking on the year-to-date chart, we can see that SMT is finally level with where it started the year at. I now own 121 shares in Scottish Mortgage, with an average purchase price of 665.6 pence, and with the current price at 720 pence, I have an unrealised return of £68.99, or 8.57%. It pays out a tiny dividend in two payments, and the current yield is 0.57%. I've not received any dividends yet, but I will get my first payment on the 8th of December of a massive £1.94. My final holding that is not new is Halion, the consumer healthcare company with a diverse portfolio of products including Sensodyne and Panadol. Halion's earnings came out just after my last portfolio update and there was nothing too remarkable in them. Operating profit was actually down from the previous year, but this is mainly due to the strengthening pound against the dollar and when adjusted to constant exchange rates, operating profit was up by 8.8%. A good sign for a company with a strong portfolio is growth around the world, and although revenue is slightly down in North America, there has been strong growth in emerging markets of 11.4%, and strong growth of 10.8% in Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Latin America. I'm not sure why they put such a huge part of the world together in one category, but it's nice to see double-digit growth in revenue. Anyway, nothing too remarkable here, and this is reflected in a mostly stable share price over the past month, with a slight gain of 1.44%. And looking at the year-to-date chart, we can see that the share price has not really done anything this year. In terms of my holding, I now have 165 shares, with an average purchase price of 320.76 pence, and the current price is at 331.1 pence, giving me an unrealized return of £17.51, or 3.31%. It pays out dividends in two payments, an interim and final payment. The yield is 1.07% and the payout ratio is 31.19%. I've not received any dividends yet. And the next dividend is the interim payment that goes ex-dividend on the 14th of March next year, with the payment date being on the 25th of April. The first of two new holdings this month is WISE, the financial technology company whose main aim is to offer a low-cost, simple and quick way of sending money across borders, among other things. This stock was pushed to the front of my mind when listening to the Playing FTSE podcast, as they went through Wise's latest earnings in a recent episode. And as someone who uses Wise frequently, it did make me think that if they have strong results, a positive outlook, and they're starting to establish an economic moat, why wouldn't I invest in it? I highly recommend the Playing FTSE podcast. Both of the Steves on the show give great insights into different stocks each week, and it's also a nice source of entertainment every Sunday if you're like me, and are a bit obsessed with all things investing. I'll put a link to their channel in the description. Definitely worth checking out. I'll run through a few of the highlights from the latest Wise earnings. Firstly, they currently only have 5% of the personal market share and less than 1% of the small and medium businesses market share. So there is a lot of room for them to grow in this market and clearly a lot of market share to grab. And a great sign for Wise is that over 67% of their customers are joining through word of mouth, which is a clear sign of a great service when growth is fueled by happy customers. 
A quick look at the financial summary shows improvements across the board, and in particular, adjusted EBITDA was up 163% when compared to the same half last year. And the final part of the earnings slides that I wanted to share is the fact that he mentioned that the infrastructure they are building is increasingly difficult to replicate. In other words, what I read in my head is that they are establishing a bit of an economic moat which protects margins and increases the chance of growing profits going forward. I'll now turn to Stockopedia to do a quick but thorough overview of the stock and look how it ranks on the quality, value and momentum factors. So firstly, looking at those scores, we can see that it scores highly on quality and particularly high on momentum. The value score is low, but that is not something I'd worry about too much as you do pay a premium for high quality and high momentum stocks usually. Those three ranks together give an overall stock rank of 78. But the bit that I like to see is that this rank, along with quality, is improving and it is up by 8 over the past 30 days. Looking at the performance chart here, we can see why the momentum score is so high, with the stock having a great past month and great past year overall. The relative strength tells us the performance in relation to the market, and we can see that over the last month, Wise has had a relative outperformance of 15.5% and 30.6% over the past year. Going across to the valuations, it is an expensive stock with a forward PE ratio of 30.6. It does have strong earnings per share growth though, although the PEG ratio is a little high. This personally does not put me off too much, as you do pay premium prices for premium businesses, and I do think that applies in the case of Wise. You can see here why it scores so highly on quality, with amazing returns on capital employed, return on equity, and strong operating margins. Not to mention it's a really healthy company with a strong balance sheet, as I'll show shortly. Looking at the financial summary, we can see the incredible compound annual growth rate across the board, particularly with the earnings per share. And you can also see that the PE ratio, although still high, is forecast to come down next year if expected earnings are met. On Stockopedia, you can also see the profitability, cash flow and dividend metrics, but I won't go through all of them, otherwise this video would be very long. At the bottom, we have the balance sheet summary, which shows that Wise is in a very strong position, with increasing cash on the books, and the net debt figure growing increasingly negative. The final part I want to show in this stock report is the analyst consensus. Although you should always take analyst ratings with a massive pinch of salt, a good sign here is that it is trending more towards a buy with the current consensus being higher than it was three months ago. That being said, given the strong performance of the Y share price this year, the analysts have clearly been wrong to classify it as a hold. There's a lot more I could go through here, but for the sake of time, I'll now move on to revealing my holding. I now own 42 shares of Y's, with an average purchase price of 711.3 pence. And it has done very well so far with a current price of 781.2 pence, giving me an unrealized return of 29 pound 27, or 9.8%. So definitely some very strong performance in the very little time I've held these shares so far. And finally, my other new holding is AstraZeneca, the largest pharmaceutical company listed on the London Stock Exchange. AstraZeneca's latest earnings showed revenue growth despite the drop-off in COVID vaccine sales, which were always going to be only a temporary source of revenue. It's a global company and they're seeing growth in revenue around the world, particularly in their oncology products. As with any pharmaceutical company, the share price is very bumpy depending on the outcomes of clinical trials that can send the share price plummeting or soaring. My reason for investing in AstraZeneca is that this risk is partly offset by their diverse portfolio and strong position which allows them to continue driving research and new products. They have loads of drugs in the pipeline and you only need one big winner to make the huge difference in earnings. Looking at the stock report, we can see that likewise it scores highly on quality and momentum with value being quite low. And it's that value rank that is pushing down the overall stock rank to 66. On the performance chart, we can see that AstraZeneca is actually down in the past year or so, and it has had a relative underperformance of 7.24% over the past year. So it's certainly not the share price performance that is driving that momentum rank. Instead, it is the historical and forecast earnings per share growth that is giving it momentum, which I'll show shortly. In terms of valuations, it has a forward PE ratio of 15.4, which is higher than the wider industry and market in the UK, but I personally do not think a forward PE ratio of 15.4 for a company like AstraZeneca is particularly expensive. I could be wrong, but it doesn't stand out as dangerously high to me. In terms of quality, we can see it's those returns on capital, equity and operating margins giving it that high quality score, alongside a good health trend. Going across to the financial summary, we can see the incredible growth in net profit and earnings per share over the past few years 
which is forecast to continue growing. And as mentioned, I do not see this stock as overvalued due to that forecast drop in the PE ratios. I'll skip through these other metrics for the sake of time, but one point to note here is that looking at the balance sheet, we can see that AstraZeneca's net debt is rising. So that is definitely something to be aware of and consider, although it is up to you to decide whether it's at a worrying level or not. And finally, I'll also quickly share the analyst consensus, which shows it moving upwards towards the strong buy category, with consensus shifting upwards compared to three months ago. So I hope that quick summary was helpful. In terms of my holding, I now own three shares in AstraZeneca with an average purchase price of 10,092 pence. It has slightly dropped since then to 10,032 pence, giving me an unrealized return of minus two pound five pence. AstraZeneca is a dividend payer and it pays out an interim and final payment. The yield is currently 2.37% with a payout ratio of 76.09%. Obviously I've not received any dividends so far, but the next interim dividend goes X dividend on the 22nd of February, and that will pay out on the 25th of March, 2024. To finish the video, I'll give a complete run through of my portfolio performance. Firstly, in terms of money going in, I've made an additional 800 pounds of contributions this month from my own money, and the three shares I've received had a combined value of £33.47. I've clearly not kept to what I said last month when I said I'd reduce the contributions to this account. I can use the excuse that I saw some good buying opportunities, but really, if I keep on using that reason, I could justify buying stocks every month, as I regularly come across tempting buying opportunities. So I do need to get better at not being tempted by individual stocks all the time. Anyway, that being said, the total amount of money going into the account now stands at £5,563.46 and that is £5,455 of my own money as well as £108.46 worth of free shares. In terms of investment returns, I now have £178.46 of unrealised gains, £12.59 in realised gains, £65.87 in dividends received and for completeness, I've also earned six pence interest on cash held in the account. Putting all that together gives me a gross investment return of plus 256 pounds and 98 pence, which is a big improvement from last month and obviously very nice to see. This figure is not the end though, as we do need to take away investment costs. Trading 2 on 2 is mostly a free platform, but you can't escape the stamp duty you have to pay when buying UK shares and that has now totaled £29.46. I've also paid 14 pence in FX fees due to selling free shares that trade in a different currency. The FX fees will be more applicable for those who predominantly buy foreign stocks. Taking all that into account, my net investment return stands at plus £227.37, or 4.08%, and that is basic return, not time-weighted. So overall, clearly a much better result than the minus £62.77 it was at last month, but as a long-term investor, I really do not care too much about these differences month to month. I'd only be concerned if I saw a massive drop in the price of one of my shares with little chance of them recovering. That is it for this video. Let me know how your portfolios have been doing in the comments below. And if you're looking for something else to watch, why not check out my playlist on factor investing? I go through a few ETFs that can potentially outperform the market, but for some reason get very little to no attention by big YouTubers. I think you'll find it interesting. As always, thank you for watching.